All right, everyone, it's Eric with FirearmTutorials.com, and today I'm going to talk about match triggers in the H&K USP series. Um, before I go into it, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what a match trigger is. So match triggers have several characteristics. One, they're usually a uh, lighter pull, so whereas a standard one might be five and a half pounds, uh, you know, a match trigger is going to be a pound, pound and a half, maybe two pounds lighter than that. Um, other than that, the smoothness. Uh, match triggers usually have polished parts or um, like nickel boron, some kind of coating to make them smoother. And when the components of the trigger are smoother, the actual trigger pull is going to be smoother as well. You won't get that gritty feeling that you get out of some of the guns, like a, like a Smith & Wesson M&P has a really gritty feeling. Um, Glocks also have somewhat of a gritty feeling. So with a match trigger, you're going to get a very smooth um, and, and crisp trigger pull. So once the gun actually does break, it's nice and crisp. Um, usually they have shorter resets and um, a lot of them have an over travel screw in the back that is makes the trigger somewhat adjustable to where you can adjust the uh, the length of pull. And some in the rifles actually you can adjust the pull weights as well. So um, in addition the other thing that makes a trigger a match trigger is once the trigger is pulled and the hammer moves forward the amount of time it takes for the hammer to actually strike the firing pin and that's in milliseconds of time we're talking very very short differences but those are pretty much the basic things or the main components that make up a match trigger so what I've got here is a USP expert in 9mm this comes uh, from the factory with a match trigger and then I've got just a standard USP 9 which does not have the match trigger so we'll take a look at um, the trigger pulls and, and differences between the two. So right off the bat, well, let's see, let's make sure that these guys aren't loaded and there's a pretty easy way that I do that. Nope, not loaded. So I'm just kidding guys. I always check these before I start. So let's look at um, just physically the differences. So you'll see here we've got the trigger. You can see the uh, over travel screw in the back there. That's a dead giveaway on the HKs for a match trigger. And it's adjustable, basically you put a, uh, an Allen wrench in the front of it here and you tweak it either forward or backwards depending on you know your preference. I will say though, if this screw is backed out too far, you um, will potentially get a situation where you'll pull the trigger and it'll take the hammer about a half a second to fall and that, that basically just means that you've got this this screw backed out too far. You back it in just a, a quarter turn and that should solve the problem. I had that with one of my uh, HK triggers. So um, the standard trigger, you'll see it's uh, pretty plain. I mean, they have the same, the same shape. Um, it's basically the same trigger with the uh, regards, ex with the exception of the screw. So let's go ahead and look at, well, let's look at the, the double action pull. Now the double action pull, I'm going to uh, do basically decocked here so when it's or, or half cocked so basically what you've got here is a lot of mush in this trigger um, and then once you tighten that up you're gonna have a pretty long pull I'm not sure exactly what the pull weight here is I could pull out a manual but I think it's around eight pounds or so so here we go not too bad but for me, this is just a little too hard to shoot accurately just because it's a long pull, it's heavy, and um, you know it's just hard to hold the gun steady while you're doing that. So let's go ahead and look at single action. Single action, you've got the, you've got the same mush, maybe a little bit less. Um, so once you tighten that up, you've got a trigger pull here. Let's say gun cycles. You let it out, and there's the reset, take the slack back, fire. Now let's look at the expert, so we'll do the same same deal here, it's decocked, you've, got, you've still got the mush, um, that's, that's just an HK design thing with the USP, but the double action mode here is much smoother than it is with the other one. So while the, uh, I think the pull weight is actually the same, 
but because uh, the match trigger has those polished components, it just feels lighter because it, the, the trigger just slides back so much, so much smoother. Now I'm actually left-handed, so this may look a little more difficult for me to do with my right hand. But so let's let's take a look at single action. Now single action is where this thing really shines because with the trigger stop there, once you pull up the slack, you're going to have a very short. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little more. So you're going to have a very short. I mean that's about as short as you can get it. I wish I could do it. Let's see if I can do it without getting my so you can see. Okay, that's I've taken the slack up there. There you go. And obviously it's not I can't put much force on it at that angle pulling the trigger with my left finger at this angle. So it doesn't take much. There you go. Now let's look at the reset. Let's say weapon cycles. There you go, that's the reset. And you're back to fire. So let's look at the, the standard one again. So we'll do the same, same test here. Take up the slack. But you see that, tr that trigger travels, you know, probably an extra millimeter or so, maybe more. And again, it's a it's a grittier uh, feeling. One thing I will say too about the uh, match trigger setup is you see the hammer here has an S on it. You don't get that on the standard one, and I think that's the uh, German word for match starts with an S. I think is is what that denotes. But um, the perception of these guns when you fire the standard action or the uh, standard trigger here. It feels like the hammer hits the firing pin with a good amount of force because you feel the vibration through the frame um, and, and you hear the, the metal basically resonate a little bit. So now with the, with the match trigger, and I don't know if this has to do with the, the hammer spring or what, but there's just a much lighter feeling. That, that hammer doesn't feel like it's hitting with as much force. And now that I look at it, let's see. I don't know if they if it fires a little faster. Let's see. I'll try my best to pull these at the same time, but this probably isn't an accurate test. Let's see. That was a mistake on my part. Let me try that again. Three, two, one. I don't know. It maybe looks like the expert just beat it by a hair, but let's let's try it again. We'll do best two out of three. Three, two, one. Too close to call. I probably, and again, this is something. Three, two. This is something we probably can't tell with our naked eye. We would need a high speed camera because, like I said, it, we're talking milliseconds here. But so the expert does come with a match trigger. Um, from the factory, but you're you're gonna pay for that. I mean, this is not a cheap it's not a cheap gun. This is probably almost double the price for the expert. And you get some other features too. You're not just paying for the match trigger, but the match trigger by itself, um, if you want to add it to the standard USP, is um, gosh, I don't know. I think it's about a hundred and hundred hundred and ten bucks maybe. Um, and then whether you want to install it yourself is another another decision. Um, I actually had the match trigger put in my SD and I chose to have a gunsmith install it. Not because I didn't feel like I could do it, just because it would have taken me twice as long probably to do it as it would to have a gunsmith do it. So um, I think it was like 60 bucks or something to have a gunsmith do it. And it was fine. I had no problems with it. Actually, the only problem I did have was that problem with the uh, over travel screw, like I said. And I just had to uh, screw that a little different and uh, that fixed the problem of the hammer not falling right away. But, you know, I always say with trigger jobs, I've yet to see um, a trigger job on a gun that I didn't feel was worth it or that didn't make a difference. Um, you can see I've got another video about the uh, Spikes Battle Trigger on an AR. That's a cheaper solution, but still, um, you know, worth the money, I think. So... 
that's the uh, deal with the match triggers, and thanks for watching.